Uh, All right, yeah. thanks, guys. All right, see you. Joining us for the next hour, Senator Ted Kaufman. Uh, Senator, it's great to see you. Thanks Good for coming you. in. Hey, thanks for having me. So you, uh, the vice president, became the vice president. Yep. You got appointed. Yeah, exactly. All right. You, you're not going to serve past. No. Uh, you're not even running in nope. November. Nope. And we said uh, off camera, I yep. said, um, well, you're just like a, a complete enigma you might you're not doing things to get reelected. I, I don't even know what to ask you yeah. i don't know how to i don't know how to approach you i don't well yeah no no because you you it's way too much credit on the re-election affecting people's minds i mean one of the basic concepts i teach a course in the Congress at Duke Law School, I've taught it for 20 years, and there's this kind of idea that everything politicians do is get re-election. I tell my students, look, think about it. 100 United States senators, they have pretty big egos. I mean, is it fair to say? I mean, do people believe senators have egos? Yes. We they, saw the Goldman they, hearings. You yeah, saw those yeah, exactly. too. Exactly. Yeah. And I was there. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and so they have big egos. The idea that you get elected, you go through everything you had to be elected, you show up in your office and you sit down and you say, hey, I'm just going to do stuff to get re-elected. He's not going to do that. You go to get elected to the Senate because you want to do some things, some things you care about. I see you're, you're specifically saying Senate, 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 Senate. You're yeah. obviously not saying the House because that's well, two years. Yeah. And from the minute you start, yeah, but you're, No, but, no, but, but I'll tell oh, you what, a guy, a guy, no, Henry Hyde, one of the best things I ever heard, Henry Hyde, best advice ever given to politicians. He was a Republican. He was a Republican. Obviously, Republicans come up with great ideas, too. Henry Hyde was, uh, used to speak, they used to have an orientation class for the mm -hmm. freshman uh, House members when they came in. And he said, he'd, he'd get up before the class, he was famous for doing, he'd say, look, first thing you have to do is you have to decide an issue that you're willing to lose your re-election over. <laughs> Best advice any better. If you go around worrying about re-election every day, you're, first off, you're not going to get re-elected. I mean, the, the American people are way too sharp. They know television way too well. You go on television, they can see you through a phony in about 15 seconds. You guys, you're not going to let a guy come on here, a man or woman come on here and talk, 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 and just worry about their re-election. And you go on all the shows, you see what you have to do out there. No, I think, I think one thing that's happened in the country is people are more and more getting involved and wanting people who say what they care. Now, the problem we've got, the reason why the Congress has this low approval, well, a lot of reasons why Congress has a lot of approval ratings. Congress has low approval ratings, but people like their local member of Congress. And yeah, the reason is, is, is because their local member of Congress is like them. If I live in Louisiana, you know, and I look at Mary Landrieu, Mary Landrieu is like me. She talks like me. She thinks like me. She has the same culture. I look at somebody like uh, Chuck Schumer. I say, oh, man, I don't like him. I mean, he's just doing this because he's caring about re-election. My Mary, I love Mary. Mary cares about it. New York, the same way. They see Mary Landrieu. They may see somebody they don't want to support. So a lot of it is people don't like the Congress. They don't like members of Congress, but they like their member of Congress. I can't believe you picked... You picked Schumer and picked on him like that. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying that way. By the way, New York Schumer's. Uh, I, mean, well, I just can't believe he's a guy. That, 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 there's a hundred senators and you pick Schumer. Do you, were you thinking? Let me think of a, of By the way, a, of a senator who's that, really yeah, dislikable. I'm, I'm really, I'm really going really to blow your mind. I think Schumer's a great senator. No, I, no, you're not blowing. I'm just yeah. surprised yeah. that you know yeah. many yeah. things yeah. said well, in jest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, go, well, why don't we focus on what you are working to try sure. and get through? And part of that is financial regulatory right. reform. You've yeah. been very focused on that. Where right. do things stand right now? Because since the oil spill came, right. it has fallen off a lot of the, the front headlines. Yeah, well, nothing really is going on now. What we did is we passed the bill, and next, on Thursday we're going to start the conference. And it's going to be a real conference. And we don't have real conferences anymore. This is going to be a real conference. They're going to bring the House bill and the Senate bill. They're going to sit down and uh, talk about how they're going to split it up and how it's going to work out. So really, that we're going to see what comes out of the conference. Do you, well, think, uh, sorry, you think Tuesday, tomorrow, could make a difference for, for some stuff, too, depending on what happens to Senator uh, Lincoln, right? Yeah, well, I don't know. I, no? I think that's overrated. I, yeah, I, I, clearly that will have some impact because Senator Lincoln has a Section 716. It's easier to get it out. Right. If, well, if maybe not. You can't tell because it depends on how this thing comes out with her. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, there's a lot of strong feeling in the Senate and in the, in the Democratic Caucus about what she's talking about, regardless of where she's coming from. I think you've seen that. I think there was this kind of initial feeling in the business community that the 716 was out of there. They started talking about that. Maria Cantwell, a bunch of other people, are really want to make sure that we do something. It's a about weird that. dynamic down there. That mm -hmm. uh, and that it always yeah. is. By the way, that's the interesting part. But, it is always weird. But someone would say it's cynical that that she uh, based so much of the way that 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 derivative language was written based yeah. on her own personal situation yeah. down there. But now she she could get thrown out by the unions, by yeah. the far left. Might, yeah, might well, that, uh, that's always strange. But Joe, I tell you, you, you one of the things I've learned and reason why I think. 
most members of the Senate get along so well is you just try not to question what other people's motives are. You don't know. I mean, I don't know what my colleague's motives are. I don't know what Blanche Lincoln's motives are. I think she's got a good section in terms of 766. Seven, yeah, what do you think about derivatives. the derivatives? I think, it's, I think you got to do something about derivatives. I mean, we, you know, we, we're, we're just going to blow sky high. My basic approach to things is wherever you have a lot of money involved and a lot of change like we had in derivatives and no transparency, Therefore, no regulation. Bad things are going to happen. So, yeah. what do you think should happen, though? Is this a situation? Oh, where I think it's got to, You got to get it out in the open. You got to make it transparent. You got to put it on the exchanges. Exchange. You got to make. Yeah, absolutely right. You got people got to know you what's put going a collateral. on. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Does it, that count for stuff that's already been uh, contracts that have already been put into effect that have already been made? Should this be backdated for those two? I think in terms of future trades, they should be. I mean, I think you just have to bring it up to speed, and we have to know what's going on. It's. A, it's what is it now? 85% of all the over-to-counter derivatives in our top five banks. Mm -hmm. I mean, our big banks. I mean, God forbid if something else happened to derivatives, we're in deep, deep trouble. And I've never, I've invested in a lot of things over the years. I've been investing for 50 years. I've never invested in derivatives because a guy... You never bought somewhere. an option? You never sold a car? I bought an option. Well, then don't but, lie. No, no. <laughs> um, that's a derivative. But I'm um, talking about, I'm talking about... You're an monitor. engineer. You, you were... Yeah, yeah, my engineer. Any other, is there another engineer in Congress? No, I'm the only one. You, oh, you, the other one, oh, you need a brain Senate. to be an engineer. And then you also, uh, you know, that disqualifies. And then yeah. you also got uh, an MBA. Yeah, from Oregon. For, yeah. I suffered under that. You're someone who should run for Senate and be in Senate. You don't fit in there at all. You had to be appointed and you're only serving, like, you know, the, the hey, rest listen, of the term. No, it's, you, don't, you don't have to cut out for it. No, no, it's perfect. It's oh. just absolutely perfect. All right. <laughs> Comments. You're smart and you've got to do some business acumen. That disqualifies just about everyone. Comments, questions about anything you see here on Squawk. Email us at squawk at cnbc.com. Up next, uh, the latest from Florida's Panhandle Plus, BP's response to the job.